Let's talk about a potential future for the human race, living in caves under the surface of the planet Mars. This has long been thought of as a very practical way to achieve life on Mars, sheltered under the ground and protected from cosmic radiation, meteors, and abrasive dust storms. And according to new scientific discoveries being made right now about the nature of the red planet, the living conditions in these Martian caves might be downright hospitable for the future human settlers. So here is how we're going to do it. This is the space race. We all love the idea of humans living on the planet Mars. It's been a cornerstone of science fiction for decades. The dream that we could establish a second home on a new world. This has been a long-held goal for some very influential people in our society, namely Elon Musk, the head of SpaceX. Elon's master plan for his rocket company is to make human life multiplanetary. On a philosophical level, he wants to extend the light of consciousness into the stars. On a practical level, Elon thinks we need a level of redundancy when it comes to planets. If something catastrophic were to happen to the Earth, then we need a contingency plan. An option B. We don't have a whole lot of options at hand, unfortunately. There's the cold, grey wasteland of the moon, conveniently located but severely lacking in livable potential. There's Venus, an acidic molten hellscape with an atmosphere so thick and hot that none of our probes sent there have been able to survive more than a few minutes. And then there's Mars. It's not exactly move-in ready, but it is a bit of a fixer-upper with some potential. For example, Mars does have an atmosphere. It's much thinner than the Earth, but still offers a lot more than the Moon, and at least it's not the pressure cooker environment of Venus. Mars has a much weaker gravity than the Earth, but still much stronger than the Moon. Mars is flush with natural resources like water. We know that at one time in the distant past, Mars was covered in oceans of liquid water, and a lot of it is still there, frozen away in polar ice caps. Mars is also red. It's a cool color. So, we love the idea of life on Mars. There are very practical reasons that we should go there and try to set up shop. It has a lot of potential to function as a new vessel for human life. But what does that look like? We all love to picture this sci-fi illustration of a shining metal colony with lots of giant glass domes and cool stuff like that. And Maybe that's an infrastructure project that we can talk about in the 22nd century, but for right now, if we seriously want to colonize the planet Mars, and if we take Elon Musk's advice and do it as quickly as possible to secure humanity's backup plan, then our best bet is to go underground. Have you ever subscribed to a newsletter or registered for a store's loyalty card, and a few days later you're plagued with spam emails, mail, and telephone calls? These are only a few of the many ways your personal information is being sold online without you knowing it. And our sponsor Incogni has the solution to protect your privacy and take your personal data off the market. Thousands of data brokers can have your full name, email, home address, along with your employment history, shipping habits, and, very concerning, your social insurance number too. This incredibly personal information in the wrong hands through data breaches can be used for many types of fraud, so keeping your personal information protected and off the market to be sold should be a top priority. Luckily for you, Incogni can request your data to be deleted to protect your privacy on your behalf, so you can live a less spam-filled life in three easy steps. First, create an account and tell them whose information should be removed. Grant Incogni the right to work for you, and they will contact the data brokers on your behalf to have your personal information removed. Incogni will handle any and all objections and keep you updated every step of the way. Take ownership of your personal information today and be one of the first 100 people to use code SPACE at the link below to get 20% off of Incogni. The reality of life on Mars will require significant protection from the elements. That means radiation, micrometeorites, atmospheric exposure, and dust storms. Radiation is going to be a big concern for long-term settlements on Mars. Exposure to radiation from the sun is about 40 to 50 times greater on the surface of Mars compared to the surface of the Earth. 
This is because Mars has no active molten core, and therefore no magnetosphere to repel cosmic rays and solar winds. Mars doesn't have much of an atmosphere at all, really. And the lack of atmosphere leaves us more vulnerable to meteors while we are staying up on top of the red planet. Earth has a very dense atmosphere, so when meteorites hit it at a speed of up to 72 kilometers per second, the intense heat generated by friction causes the rock to burn up long before it reaches the ground. And even if something does get through, it's going to end up a lot smaller on impact than it was out in space. The atmospheric pressure on Mars is less than 1% of ours on Earth, so that meteorite is still going to be moving at pretty close to 72 kilometers per second when it hits our Mars city, which won't end well. And exposure to this low pressure environment is going to be an even bigger problem for the human body. If there were to be a breach in the habitat and a depressurization, then our blood would literally boil and our eyeballs would explode. So, going underground would be a great way to solve some of the biggest challenges that the planet Mars throws at us, and Elon Musk knows this very well. There's a clip of Elon Musk answering questions at a conference back in 2017, and when asked about how the tunnel boring idea would relate to his Mars colony plans, Elon said this, I do think getting good at digging tunnels could be really helpful for Mars. Building underground habitats with good radiation shielding, you could build a whole city underground if you wanted to. People would still want to go outside from time to time, but you can build a tremendous amount underground with the right boring technology on Mars." End quote. This could be a not-so-subtle pitch by Elon to get his boring company involved in tunneling out a new underground colony on Mars, but it's hard to say. What if I told you we don't even need boring machines on Mars, though, because it's already full of natural tunnels? This is kind of mind-blowing, but it turns out the planet itself has already done the hard work for us. The surface of Mars is full of rock formations called lava tubes. These are leftovers from the ancient times when Mars was volcanically active, just like the Earth. At some point over the past 4 billion years, our two planets probably looked very similar to each other, living bodies with active molten cores of rock and metal. The giant mountain Olympus Mons on the surface of Mars is the tallest known mountain in the solar system, more than two and a half times the height of Everest. This is the remnant of a Martian volcano. But Mars started to cool down much faster than the Earth. Maybe because it's smaller, maybe because it's farther away from the sun, but the core of Mars solidified, the magnetic field dissipated, and the atmosphere was blown away by the solar wind. But left behind were these gigantic tunnels cut into the surface rock by the ancient lava flows. We know that these tubes exist on Mars because we have observed the skylights in the tunnel ceilings in our satellite flybys. These are points where the roof of the lava tubes caved in leaving a perfectly round hole in the surface that reveals the hollow cavern underneath. We have spotted tons of these skylights on Mars, they are also on the moon, and that tells us there is already a network of tunnels just waiting to be found. Because of the low gravity on Mars, these lava tubes will be significantly wider than the ones that we see form on the Earth. They could even be hundreds of meters across and kilometers in length. The roofs of these tunnels could be as much as 90 meters thick, providing more than enough shielding against radiation, meteorites, and anything else the solar system can throw at us. The insulating effect of these cave tunnels should maintain a consistent temperature of around negative 20 degrees Celsius, and because we believe that the rock that makes up the outer surface of Mars will be non-porous in nature, we should at some point be able to create a pressurized, artificial atmosphere within the caves. So it would be chilly, but we could breathe outside of a helmet and our eyes wouldn't explode. Not too terribly bad. And on top of all that, the insides of these tubes could very well be the place where we find the remnants of past life on Mars. Maybe all of the evidence has been blasted away from the surface or buried under hundreds of millions of years of dust storms. But under the ground, 
could be the preserved fossils of microorganisms, or even fish or reptiles or animals. Maybe there was a civilization of some kind of mammal living on Mars when the planet began to die, and they retreated under the ground for a last-ditch effort at survival. We could find some freaky stuff down there. New studies that have come out in recent months are even suggesting that there may still be the remnants of geothermal activity happening under the surface of Mars, a source of heat and energy that we could harness to make our life underground even more sustainable. According to researchers at the University of Cambridge, there is new evidence that would suggest Mars still contains liquid water under the frozen surface of its polar ice caps, They've come to that conclusion by monitoring the patterns of the ice caps change in height through the Martian seasons, noticing that the altitude of the frozen peaks would rise and fall in undulating patterns, suggesting that they are actually floating and not frozen all the way through to the rocky surface. Professor Neil Arnold from Cambridge's Scott Polar Research Institute, who led this research, told the Journal of Nature Astronomy the combination of the new topographic evidence, our computer model results, and the radar data make it much more likely that at least one area of subglacial liquid water exists on Mars today, and that Mars must still be geothermally active in order to keep the water beneath the ice caps liquid. And if there is enough of that geothermal activity left in the subsurface mantle of the planet Mars to maintain a subglacial lake of water, then this might be a resource that we can tap into that would supply us with free heating in one of those underground lava tube-based colonies. That's a really big deal. Anyone who's ever tried to heat a house in negative 20 degrees weather knows how much energy it takes to maintain a comfortable temperature in that kind of condition. So being able to pull free energy from Mars itself would give us a massive upper hand when it comes to building a sustainable human colony. And let's be real, we are going to need all the help we can get to even begin to pull off something of this magnitude. But when we start to think about how we might leverage the natural environment of the planet Mars and make it work to our advantage, suddenly, things seem a bit more possible. What do you think though? Would you live in a cave on Mars or are you still pulling for that dome city? Let us know in the comments below. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it, that really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.